Roger Moore's daughter confirmed what we thought all along. Roger Moore was one of the most iconic actors of his generation, beloved for his charm, wit, and smooth demeanor. Born on October 14, 1927, in Stockwell, London, Moore rose from humble beginnings to become a global superstar, best known for his portrayal of James Bond. His journey through life, marked by talent, charisma, and an enduring sense of kindness, has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry and the hearts of fans worldwide. Roger George Moore was the only child of George Alfred Moore, a police officer, and Lillian Pope. His early life in London was relatively modest, and young Moore's upbringing was shaped by his working-class roots. He attended Battersea Grammar School but struggled academically, showing more interest in the arts than in his studies. During World War II, Moore and his family were evacuated from London due to the German bombings, an event that had a lasting impact on his early years. Moore's interest in acting began in his teenage years, and he attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art after a brief stint as an animator. His career, however, didn't take off immediately. He began working as a model, appearing in magazine advertisements and small roles in films during the late 1940s. Despite facing numerous rejections, Moore's determination never wavered, and he continued to pursue acting opportunities. Moore's big break came in the 1950s with television, where he first gained attention for his role as Sir Wilfred of Ivanhoe in the TV series Ivanhoe, 1958-1959. His good looks, tall frame, and suave mannerisms made him a natural leading man, and his popularity soared. This early role helped establish Moore as a rising star, but it was his role as Simon Templar in the British TV series The Saint, 1962-1969 that cemented his place in entertainment history. In The Saint, Moore portrayed a suave, debonair detective who tackled criminals with wit, intelligence, and a sense of justice. His portrayal of Simon Templar not only resonated with audiences but also showcased his unique ability to blend humor with action, a skill that would serve him well in later roles. The series was a massive success internationally, turning Moore into a household name. Though Moore had achieved television fame, it wasn't until he took on the iconic role of James Bond that his status as a global superstar was solidified. After Sean Connery retired from the role of 007, producers of the Bond films were searching for a new face to carry the franchise forward. Moore was cast as the suave British spy in Live and Let Die, 1973, marking the beginning of a new era for the character. Moore brought a unique interpretation to James Bond differentiating himself from Connery's more serious, gritty portrayal. His bond was charming, light-hearted, and often humorous, a reflection of Moore's own personality. Over the course of seven Bond films, including The Spy Who Loved Me, 1977, and Moonraker, 1979, Moore became synonymous with the role, and his portrayal resonated with the global audience. His version of Bond became an archetype of 1970s and 1980s cinema blending thrilling action sequences with an unmistakable air of sophistication and wit. After retiring from the Bond franchise with a view to a kill, 1985, Moore continued acting but shifted his focus more toward charitable endeavors. He worked on various film and television projects but became increasingly involved with UNICEF, serving as a goodwill ambassador from 1991 until his death. His humanitarian work, particularly in advocating for children's rights and aiding those affected by poverty and disease, earned him widespread admiration. Moore's contributions to humanitarian causes were recognized with numerous awards and honors, including a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II in 2003 for his services to charity. He was deeply committed to helping others, and this dedication reflected his kind, compassionate nature a side of him that fans may not have been as familiar with during his Bond years but one that shaped his legacy in significant ways. In his personal life, Roger Moore was known for his sense of humor, warmth, and grace. He was married four times, with his most enduring relationship being with his fourth wife, Christina Tholstrup, whom he married in 2002. His earlier marriages, including those to actresses Dorn Van Steen, Dorothy Squires, and Luisa Mattioli were widely publicized. Despite the ups and downs of his personal life, 
Moore maintained a reputation as a gentleman, both on and off the screen. He was a devoted father to his three children, Deborah, Jeffrey, and Christian, and took pride in their accomplishments. Moore's family life, while often overshadowed by his public persona, was central to his happiness, and he cherished the moments he spent with his loved ones. Roger Moore's daughter confirms what we thought all along. Roger Moore, beloved actor and former James Bond, had a long and challenging battle with various health issues throughout his life, starting from a very young age. His childhood was marked by a series of illnesses that were common at the time, but Moore seemed to be especially susceptible. He contracted chickenpox, measles, mumps, and double pneumonia, a rare but severe infection of both lungs that was potentially life-threatening, especially in an era before modern antibiotics. These illnesses left him in a fragile state, and he was repeatedly hospitalized. In addition, Moore developed jaundice, which caused the yellowing of his skin and eyes due to the excess buildup of bilirubin in his system. It was a serious condition that required significant medical attention. His childhood medical struggles didn't end there. He also had to undergo the removal of his appendix, tonsils, and adenoids, all common surgeries for children of that time, but Moore's need for all three procedures indicated a weak immune system. As Moore grew older and began his legendary acting career, his health issues did not fully abate. Throughout his adult life, he became a long-term sufferer of kidney stones, a painful condition caused by the buildup of mineral deposits in the kidneys. This led to several episodes of intense pain and medical intervention. In fact, during the production of one of his most iconic roles as James Bond in Live and Let Die in 1973, Moore was briefly hospitalized due to a severe bout of kidney stones. This was a critical moment, as the Bond franchise was immensely demanding, both physically and mentally, but Moore pushed through the discomfort, not allowing his health issues to overshadow his professional commitments. Despite this hospitalization, he managed to recover quickly enough to resume filming without much delay. His kidney stone issues recurred a few years later during the production of Moonraker in 1979, another Bond film, where he once again had to seek medical attention. These episodes highlighted Moore's resilience, as he always managed to continue performing despite the debilitating nature of the condition. Moore's health challenges took a more serious turn in 1993 when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. This diagnosis was a sobering moment for the actor, who had already faced numerous health issues throughout his life. Prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers among men, and its treatment often involves difficult and invasive procedures. Moore, however, approached the diagnosis with characteristic bravery and underwent successful treatment for the disease. His battle with prostate cancer was a private one, kept largely away from the public eye, as he focused on his recovery while maintaining his career and philanthropic efforts. His ability to recover from such a severe illness further cemented his reputation as a man of remarkable strength and perseverance. In 2003, while appearing on Broadway, Moore experienced a terrifying health scare. He collapsed on stage during a performance, causing immediate concern for his well-being. It was later revealed that he had a potentially deadly condition, a dangerously slow heartbeat. This condition, known as bradycardia, required the fitting of a pacemaker, a small electronic device implanted in the chest to regulate heart rhythm. The incident was a reminder of Moore's vulnerability despite his outwardly robust persona. He returned to the stage after recovering, but the incident marked a significant chapter in his ongoing health struggles. His heart condition was closely monitored thereafter, and the pacemaker allowed him to maintain a relatively normal life, even though his energy levels had to be carefully managed. Moore's health continued to decline in the following years. In 2013, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, a chronic condition that affects the body's ability to regulate blood sugar. This diagnosis required Moore to make significant lifestyle changes, including adjustments to his diet and daily routines to manage the disease effectively. Diabetes, particularly in older individuals, can lead to a range of complications, and Moore faced this new challenge with the same courage he had shown throughout his life. Despite the added strain on his health, he remained active in both his professional and charitable endeavors. In the years leading up to his final illness, a tumor spot was discovered on Moore's liver, signaling yet another serious health battle. 
Although this discovery was concerning, it was managed for a time, allowing Moore to continue enjoying his later years. However, by 2017, Moore's health had taken a final turn when he was diagnosed with cancers of both the lung and liver. His cancer treatments, though aggressive, could not stop the progression of the disease. During this difficult period, Moore also suffered a fall that severely injured his collarbone, adding further pain to his already fragile condition. The injury compounded his health issues, making his final months particularly challenging. On May 23, 2017, Moore's family announced his passing in Switzerland. He died peacefully at his home in Kranz, Montana surrounded by his loved ones, after a brave battle with cancer. His death marked the end of an era for fans around the world who had admired his charm, wit, and indomitable spirit, both on and off the screen. His passing was mourned by the entire entertainment industry, but perhaps no tributes were as poignant as those from the actors who had also portrayed James Bond. Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig each of whom had shared the unique bond of playing 007, expressed their deep respect and admiration for Moore. His legacy as Bond, combined with his humanitarian work and lifelong resilience, ensured that his memory would endure. Moore was laid to rest in Monaco Cemetery, a final resting place that reflected his longtime association with glamour, sophistication, and the high life. Despite his passing, Moore's legacy lives on, not only through his iconic roles but also through the impact he had on those who knew him personally and professionally. His life was one of great triumphs, both in the face of health struggles and in the world of entertainment.